powerful winter storm with gale force winds and 15 foot waves surrounds a sailboat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. A distress call goes out, but there's one problem. The sailboat is too far out and the rescue helicopter can't get to it. And then to make matters worse, it's discovered that one of the lives on the line is a five month old baby. On November 17, 1994, an urgent call came in from the Marine Flower 2. On board, Ira Hubbard had been fighting 20-foot swells during a fierce storm. His wife, her 13-year-old daughter, and their four-month son, Ira Jr., were with him. A Coast Guard C-130 was dispatched from the air station in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, to search for the Marine Flower 2. It spotted the craft over 400 miles off the coast of Virginia. The crew radioed back to base for a helicopter rescue team, but there was a major problem. The Marine Flower 2 had traveled beyond the fuel range of their rescue helicopters. Faced with the possibility of a tragic loss of life, seasoned Coast Guard officers tried to figure out a way to effect a rescue. Lieutenant Commander Dave Gunderson was the veteran pilot of the H-60 Coast Guard helicopter which had to fly into these dangerous conditions. I was in my office when I got the call. Um, they said, uh, could you come see if you can plan this, see if you can do it, since it was outside our range. We did some planning, and uh, it wasn't doable. They said, well, there's a Navy uh, aircraft carrier out there. How about if you land on that and get gas? That's something that we very rarely do. We only do it when it's a uh, life or death situation. And then I replanned it and said, yeah, I can do this. When the helicopter arrived, the rescue team quickly moved into action. The original plan would be to hoist them right from the boat because it was a four-month-old baby and none of us on the crew were sure that the baby would be able to survive those seas. The distance it was away, we were kind of at the limit of our fuel endurance, so we couldn't stay there a long time. If you're going to take somebody right off of a sailboat, it's going to take you probably two to three times as long as it would if you let them get in the water. So after looking at the boat, we decided let's take them out of the water. Okay, sounds good, Jerry. Go ahead. Rescue swimmer Mario Vittone was prepared for the drop. Personally, I'm always very, very nervous in the door waiting to go. Flying out there, we're, we're, you know, it's one of the things you have to think about. What if you lose them? What if you can't get them? You know, how hard is it going to be? And you have to look at the scene. How hard is it going to be to get the baby out of the water? Uh, it was something that hadn't been done before. The original plan with the life raft was uh, to go down to the water and use the life raft as like a staging platform for the baby. So if for some reason we had to let go or, or I, I couldn't hang on, the baby would still be floating and we'd have a way to get to him. But the sea state and the breaking waves uh, took the life raft almost immediately. When we started, there were 20 to 25 foot seas and by the time we left they were building. And I, and I, I from where I am they were 100 feet. Fortunately, we were able to get him about 10 feet from the back of the uh, boat. The father on board the boat threw him a lifeline, and he grabbed the lifeline, and he was starting to pull himself toward the um, back of the boat. I'd never been in seas that, that size. Uh, they, and they weren't hard to swim in and manage yourself in. But if, if I was trying to get through them, they're just walls of water. Only half the time could I see the boat because it was behind one of those waves. The plan was for the mother to give him the baby and uh, he take it and we recover him and the baby. It didn't kind of work out that way. The mother kind of climbed over the back of the boat and she was on the little swim platform back there waiting to go, waiting for him to grab him and go when a wave came and washed them overboard. Fortunately, the wave washed him right into the swimmer's hands. So it was two or three seconds where she was from the boat until she was in the safety of the swimmer's hands. I see up until about the last 10 feet. After the last 10 feet, it's the uh, flight mechanic size. He's the one that operates the hoist back there. And um, he's probably the, the most critical member of the crew for the, uh, for the actual rescue, actually getting the people up out of the water. If he didn't put the basket down right next to the rescue swimmer and, and direct me into position right next to the rescue swimmer and the rescue swimmer had a lunge for it, a leap for it, it might have not been as successful. He was able to get it right down there next to him. The mother and the child are being lifted up, and um, they're coming up the line, and the apprehension in the crew is just uh, is terrible at that time. We don't know, well, is the baby all right? We just see it coming up. Yeah, she's coming up good. Okay.
The mother got off into the seat, and she was clutching at her baby. And then the, the co-pilot kind of looked back there and looked at the baby, and the baby had its eyes closed, and it didn't respond or anything like that. But then about the third time, he looked back, and the baby opened his eyes and gave its mother a little smile. And that kind of cut the tension in the crew. The uh, daughter and the father went, went pretty smooth, and were able to complete it probably about 10, 15 minutes, and get everybody safely on board, and then headed back toward the aircraft carrier. After their nightmarish ordeal, the Hubbard family was airlifted back to Elizabeth City, North Carolina, where anxious reporters crowded around them. Examined by a medical team, the family was miraculously without injury, suffering only from exhaustion. The fact that they were alive was a tribute to the training, professionalism, and bravery of the U.S. Coast Guard. The pilot, Mr. Gunnarsson, has more hours here in, in helicopters than anybody else and has done more rescues, certainly, than, than all of us out here. And he's seen waves that big, so he, he was confident in his abilities, which made me feel a lot, made all of us feel a lot better. And, and at the close, I'd like to thank my mother, who, uh, much to her dismay, allowed me to do this job. <laughs> you train a lot, you train hard, you did your job, and you completed your job successfully, so you, you feel pretty good. And you feel real good about how the whole system worked. We'll be right back with more amazing and heroic stories right after this.